on this episode of the Mike Robinson YouTube channel. I travel to the magical, mystical Isle of Skye on the west coast of Scotland to see my friend Scott McKenzie, award-winning gamekeeper and conservationist, where we harvest and manage his population of red deer hinds. We're on the Isle of Skye with Scott McKenzie, who's uh, got the best reputation for uh, as a professional deer manager, deer stalker, and a lovely all-round guy, and I've always wanted to come here. And uh, we're following him in his Argo. He's got his daughter, Orla, and um, we are gonna head up and try and help him get his hind cull today. So, culling hinds is critical. Um, it's kind of the job. Stags are the sporting element, but hinds are like the job, and I love doing the hinds. So, um, we're gonna head up this stunning scenery on maybe the best weather day of the entire year. Everything we dream of, cold and crisp. Got the rifle checked on the range, so there's no excuses for cock up. It's me. So I'm using today my Hornady 65 PRC, and I find this a fabulous round, 130 grain CX outfitter rounds. This is a sort of go-to for bigger animals, and uh, I'm going to put four in the magazine. And then I'm going to take another dozen rounds in a pouch. And this guarantees I've got enough for the day. One thing I've learned the hard way is that you don't go up hind stalking with five or six rounds because if something goes wrong and you've got to finish a deer or whatever, you, you, or you drop a magazine, goodness knows what. She is unloaded. Excellent. Unloaded rifle, very important. So, Scott's just, what have you just seen, Scott? There's a hind and a calf just moving over the ridge, so they've probably heard us walking up and down at the bottom. So we're just going to give them time to settle. They may move on, but what we don't want is them to run, run and take everything with them. So, so we could, you see these things, the, the, the head was up, their ears were up, so just let them settle back down again. We're now looking straight at the famous Kulin Ridge on Sky, across the sound here. And looking down, we've got six red deer hinds and calves feeding right on the shoreline. Now, we've climbed quite a long way, so the last thing we want to do is lose all our height. But they're not going anywhere, so as a backup plan, those deer are perfect. So, Millie smelling deer. She keeps going. Dogs' noses are something like a thousand times better than ours. So we've got a group of hinds and a young stag, 200 yards around the corner. Wind's perfect, they don't know we're here. It was the ones that the dogs were smelling earlier on. We'd like them ideally to creep another 50 yards this way, it's always good practice. But we're gonna try and get into position on that little platform there to take a shot.
So it was a good, good stalk, and Scott managed to persuade the deer to stand perfectly for us. And uh, the two deer that we wanted, we have. We had the calf and the hind. Um, the, the calf and hind is, that are still up there on the hillside are big, juicy, healthy deer. The ones we shot were slightly older, slightly more raggedy. And um, the first deer went down, didn't even twitch. Second deer had a tiny bit of adrenaline, so it took five, six seconds. Um, but both were just shot through the lungs. I tried not to break the shoulders. Um, and uh, you know, the rifle bullet did its job. That CX round from Hornady, as ever, is just unbelievably lethal. Um, so yeah, amazing. What Success. a beautiful morning. Couldn't be better. Okay, dogs. Dogs, find it. Oh, find it, come on. Hold on, girls. Yeah. So this is a there lovely, you go. Lovely There's animal. the exit. Quartered through behind the ribs. Perfect. Yeah. That'll do. She was slightly quartered. That's yeah, the just exit. A little bit high. That'll do fine. Yeah. No, brilliant. Halfway up, that'll do. I hate breaking shoulders. No, no, it makes it is so much meat damage. It's so much, and stewing and braising and, you know, yeah. I just hate, especially on a big open hill like this. Yeah, you've got all the time in the world. If so the deer runs 60 yards, it doesn't matter too much. Yeah, so th those two that we've left, there's a very high likelihood that they'll be pregnant. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they, they're in good condition, good animals. They'll bring on two cars yeah. come this June. So we're not really kind of, we've, we've thinned a couple out, but that group will get replenished in a few months time so it's you know you're keeping a good nice healthy population going and when their time comes well you know when they get older we'll kill them and it just keeps that cycle going mm -hmm. if 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 i wasn't here doing this for the love of hunting and stalking and people coming in to appreciate that experience in this landscape these deer would be treated very differently and i think the wider general public kind of don't get that they see the hunting fraternity as it, it, it's, it's a bloodlust it's 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 enjoying the experience it's enjoying the, the whole event of the hunt so you know people come here to do that it means that these deer are important to us we love seeing the deer we love having the deer the de deer are intrinsically linked to this landscape so then you know they, they're important to the landscape to the people and then the general public will always see them if if i'm not here and people don't appreciate them for, for hunting purposes and things like that, they will be treated very, very differently. They will be treated more as a pest. And the, the selective process that we do would just, it doesn't become a selective, it's just a big drop in numbers. So this was the second deer and it stopped momentarily to look back. It was slightly quartered, but I put the bullet a couple of inches behind the shoulder. It's come out quartered slightly a bit further back on the other side. But it's got the lungs and uh, we've not we've not broken the shoulders which is my number one thing so yeah deer was on its feet for seven or eight seconds and then dead and you can see it's shot in the lungs because you can see all the blood coming out of its mouth and that's what we want to achieve no broken shoulder double lungs um, it might be slightly slower than the heart but it's it's totally certain like a deer cannot run away with a bullet through both lungs we're using the hornady 6.5 prc precision rifle cartridge. This is 130 grain CX. Interesting, Scott, we were talking earlier about Scotland's the, the die-hard 270 land, isn't oh, it? Yes, yeah, Uplands of Scotland. Yeah. Everyone loves a 270. So this is the same cartridge, like the uh, same bullet, really. Um, it just doesn't kick as much. <laughs> Which is always a bonus. You know what I mean? My, my memory of coming up to Scotland 20 years ago using estate rifles was fearsome 270s barking in my shoulder unmoderated you boom like this <laughs> and you never see the bullet hit the animal because the rifle's four inches you, up in the you've air you've lost the animal and you yeah. have to find it again but these are fantastic rounds and uh, and very effective and very accurate um and uh and this is a cx round which is a, a fragment free round so having gone through the deer it won't lose any of its mass and there's no lead core and that's really important um, here in the UK more and more and more. It won't be long before that's the law. But from my point of view, the main reason I like it is because I'm, when I'm using meat, I know that there are no metal fragments in the meat.
So the perfect finisher off is we're in the magnificent hotel here on the south of Skye, eating stunning red deer wild venison stew with mashed potatoes and sourdough bread. The drinker's having a pint of Guinness. How do we pronounce the name of this amazing hotel? So the hotel is called Ferran Ellen Earman. Well, sorry, that's the estate and the hotel is Hotel Ellen Earman. Ellen Earman. Ellen Earman. Hotel Ellen Earman. It's everything you want. It's wood clad. It's beautiful. It's got a crackling little fire. The wonderful chef has produced a stunning, delicious venison stew. So we've been on a hill. We've been part of a management plan. We've put money into the local community and now we're eating the results. And that, to me, is everything that, that deer are good for in Britain. It's a sustainable asset that we should be enjoying and using more of in this country. And we're very lucky to have it. Mm -hmm. And don't forget to like and subscribe and watch the next one. <laughs>